they go do with me now I'm still a talk of the town Bring the scissors, I'm hooking them down We turn the smiles into frowns Can't hop out, then we clear in the crowd This pussy like Jump Jump in this pussy like Come on Jump in this pussy like Jump Jump in this pussy like Come on Jump in this pussy is water Jump in this pussy like Jordan What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and we're here for another episode of Talk of the Town Interviews. And today, I have the beautiful... Asian A, Queen A, lead out of Mermaid Gang, Gee, I'm in the building. Yes, we have Queen A here in the building. So, how's your time in New York been so far? I mean, it's just like your energy. Great. Yeah, <laughs> I've just yeah. been working. Like, it's amazing. Only thing that I don't like is it's so cold, and the mm -hmm. wind is like... Frosty, like, yeah, I, don't know. I mean, girl, it's December, but surprisingly, yeah. I mean, it's actually nice for really? December, yes. Does it normally get dark this early? Yeah, oh, okay, it's short. I'm early. like looking outside, we get in the Uber at 4 30. I'm like, it's dark, like, <laughs> it don't get dark in Atlanta around this time till like maybe seven. Oh, yes, yeah. and we said the daylight savings they put melatonin in it because yeah, you're getting fine. tired and it's dark, yeah. But we're gonna jump straight into it because I know that you're busy, so. Tell me about like how you got into music. When did this all start? So I actually been doing music for about three years, but professionally like two and a half. Okay. At first it was just a hobby. Like I just got into something because I was going through a situation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let me write. Cause usually when I go through stuff, I just write. I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. So my brother was doing beats. He sent me some beats mm -hmm. and I was on a voice memo like, mm -hmm, with a cadence. And I'm mm -hmm. like, shit, what's next? So I go to the studio. Six months down the line, I'm like, this is my calling. Mm. So I just started putting all the bread I was hustling with into the music. Mm -hmm. And then a year later, I got signed. So I signed to the one and only BOMG, yeah, independent label from Atlanta. West that's, side. that's lit. Okay, so I know your dad is in the industry as well. Did, yeah. his, is his, did his involvement in the industry impact you wanting to pursue a musical career at all? or no? Not wanting to pursue it, but I say I know history from him. Like, I kind of mm -hmm. know music. He didn't really let us grow up with music without no substance. Mm -hmm. So I can say I got that passion for music from him. But uh, me coming into the industry was kind of like a thing on my own. But okay. shout out to my daddy because he know everybody I know. It would be so crazy. Like mm -hmm. People come up to him like now like, hey, you know your daughter? Or they'll see him, meet him, and not even know that I'm his daughter. Or mm -hmm. People ask me if that's my dad. So it just be crazy. It's great, though. It's great. Well, I mean, it's dope because that means that you're making a name for yourself. And you're not in the shadows. So that yeah. says a lot. That yeah. definitely says a lot. Okay, so... Um, who were your influences growing up in music? I loved R and B. I okay. wouldn't say like a specific artist, but I loved R and B. Mm -hmm. um, through trying times, R and B was my scapegoat, and of course the Queen Nikki. You of know, course, I, you know, course. young. That's what I grew up on. Of yeah. course. So are you a Barb? I'm a mermaid, but I fuck okay. with the barbs. You yeah. a mermaid that fucks with the barbs. Okay, yeah. so what do you think that Nicki Minaj and, I mean, not only her, but, like, other influential women in rap would think about today's musical climate? Because, I mean, women are really excelling right now in rap. Like, it is a time it's the to be time. a woman as a rapper. Like, it's taken off. So what do you think, like, their opinions would be on women in rap right now? As long as it's substance, I think they're okay with it. Like mm -hmm. I said, i seen something Nicki said before. She was just like, um, the music lacks substance. Mm -hmm. And it does. You know what I'm saying? But I just feel like it's great that women are able to actually speak on what they want to speak on. But just make sure the music got substance, man. Of course. You want to hear some real music. My, even if I'm talking about a man, dingo, it got some substance to it. Yeah. Okay, so walk me through your creative process. What does that look like? So I typically write at home. Okay. Still. I still do the voice memo thing. I listen to the beats. I'm like, okay, this is how I feel. This is the subject I want to speak on. Mm -hmm. Think of even an experience I went through, mm -hmm. want to go through, or something I've heard someone go through. Put it on the beat. Okay. You know? So how do you decide what songs you want to drop versus the ones that you want to keep in the stash? Like, do you put out the songs that you think people want to hear or the ones that you really fuck with? So I'm signed with my label. They have a great ear for music. They okay. kind of know what to drop, when to drop. So all I got to do is create and then... We all like minded and we come up with the song to drop. Like mm -hmm. as far as the tape, we put 17 songs on there. We went down probably 150 songs. Mm -hmm. So we had multiple studio sessions like, no, this is not ready for this. Like, but I'm up three albums right now. So. I mean, yeah, you do yeah. your thing. So, I mean, we already kind of touched on like substance in music. And even if you're speaking sexually, you still have that substance in your music. Mm -hmm. But even with that, you know, there are a lot of people that like to critique women who talk about, you know, their sexuality and, you know, mm -hmm. doing all of this stuff. So what would you have to say to people who feel like, you know, who criticize women who are doing that? 
Uh, bing bong. <laughs> fuck <laughs> your life. <laughs> fuck your life. No, but for real though, I mean, you just got to understand the times is, I mean, at the end of the day, I know 20 years ago, it wasn't okay for women to really talk about it, but we really live in it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm going to speak my truth. And on top of that, I'm sexually in tune. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with speaking on it. So other women might not be, but mm-hmm. it's okay. So you really like that. Like it, That's what you're saying. It's you really, really like, like that. that. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So have you, so, uh, have you always been like so confident? confident in your femininity like have you always been even before you started rapping were you always like open about talking about this stuff or did it come to you as you became like bigger in your artistry so it's crazy like you know i'm very spiritual i believe in god he break you down before he build you up absolutely like i always been like confident in myself but i went through a situation a real bad car accident mm. i struggled a, a, for a minute with depression like i got stuck i had scars on my face mm. i couldn't walk i had to go through therapy so that kind of like built me but i had to build myself on ground zero mm-hmm. and the woman that i built myself to be is confident like really don't unapologetic and just living my life and doing everything i say i'm gonna do and standing on it I mean, so. you know, God does give his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. And he really built you up because you are really yeah. doing the damn thing. Thank so who, who do you make your music for? Women, especially. Okay. Like you, pretty women. But you know what I'm saying? I, I make it for everybody in the world because I got different vibes. Mm-hmm. Like if you listen to the tape, I got R&B on there. I got some motivational music on there. I got mm-hmm. some trap stuff on there, some club vibes. Like, I'm versatile. Yeah, it's very, yeah. yeah I was about to say, versatile. it's very, very versatile. Okay, so what has the reception? So, of course, you have the chosen one. And we, we mentioned it a little bit. Yes, you have the chosen one. So, what has the reception been so far of that album? They love it. You mm-hmm. see the stars on Apple Music, baby, eight. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a few of them things on there. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a few. And, I, I mean, you have T.I. on there. You have Flo Millie, Cash Soul. What, what was it like working with them on this album? So, um, T.I., I'm going to start with T.I. Because he's the king of the South. So, shout out to T.I., one of the realest in it, yeah, but so T.I. actually DM'd me. I did the Be Easy song a few months back, maybe like the top of the year. Mm-hmm. I DM'd him, I'm like, oh, gee, I really like if you, you know, check it out. So mm-hmm. he wrote back, he said, yeah, he fuck with it, blah, mm-hmm. blah, mm-hmm. Coming down the line, he hit me right before I was about to submit my tape to the label. He like, we still owe the world one, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hell yeah. So I respond, I say, my tape drop, November 19th. I got something for you. He say, send it. I sent it. He yes, called me like... Listen to this. I listened to it. I said, man, he lost his mind. Then, um... And it's a bop, y'all. It's a, it's yeah. a bop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's a vibe. Um, and he, I reposted him. He reposts anything I post and tag him in. He wrote me, he was like, I'm genuinely happy to be along the ride with That's you. Dope. So That's shout dope. out to T.I., man. One of the realest in it. No cap, him and his wife. I met his wife, too. So. Mm-hmm. Shout out, to Tiny. Cool. Shout out to Tiny too, yeah. Okay, so I know you had the jump challenge, and yeah. then on Hate and Hoes, you had the two winners jump on that with you, which is dope yeah, because no I mean, oh, yeah, right. girl, you already know yeah. how we do it, talk of the town. So oh, yes, right. I thought that was dope because you know some people they have like challenges where it's like, oh, you know, rap over my beat and you get X amount of money, or yeah. I'll share your video or something. But you put them on the album, yeah. so that's really dope. So what made you like want to do that as opposed to any other like incentive? So it wasn't just my decision it was a label decision mm-hmm. but my outlook on it was she when I was a little bit lower than I am now people didn't want to help me mm-hmm. and I don't mind shining the light on another woman it ain't gonna never did mine so it was like on top of that you gotta be hard to be on this tape now mm. yeah right because it's like that so, I mean and it was so, hard so you gotta be hard you had a good tape, for but that. if you can really match that energy then go ahead mm-hmm. so I picked Taylor May she's actually from the south side too shout out to her and then Judy she from Texas. Mm-hmm. So I had one more girl on there. She, because um, I said three girls. And I kept my word, but she didn't send her verse in it, so. Okay. So. I mean, you snooze, you lose. It be like yeah. that. But shout out to you, too. Uh, everybody went crazy, for real. It was, uh-huh. a, it yeah. was a very hard decision. Because even a girl got on there singing to the beat. Mm. Yeah, so like. Oh, I didn't see that one. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, it was dope. And I did only women could submit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out to the guys, though. But I just. I had to do it for the women, you know. Okay, so I mean, so you also, of course, have Dingo. Yeah. And that video went crazy. Like, that, yeah. I, I fuck with it. I see the little yoga balls. It was giving me Anaconda vibes. It was. It yeah. was. I mean, what? what? Yeah. Don't do that. I love Nikki, but you know, I just like to be named. I mean, you are named. <laughs> and you had that mermaid tail. Yeah. And you made sure you rep for Mermaid Gang mm-hmm. in there. So tell me, like, how did Mermaid Gang even, like, Come about how? What is? What does it signify? I am the leader of the mermaid gang, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay, but, uh, and it got the mermaid with the ski mask, y'all. Yeah, That's just okay. Though. Yeah, it's a brand. Let me yeah. let me hear. So tell us, like, how did that come about? 
So the mermaid game, so first my sister came up with the mermaid to call Miss Mermaid. I'm mm-hmm. just like, but I ran with it, my older sister. So not only did I run with it, I did my research. So if you Google it or if you dig a little bit, you'll see that it's a European like folklore, meaning they didn't pass it down generation to generation, mm-hmm. saying that they were called sirens, saying it was beautiful creatures, magical, the music, like the sing. So I thought that was dope. Mm-hmm. And then outside of that, oh, I added my own twist. Like when you see a mermaid, she hard to catch. Mm. Not only that, when you see her, she's swimming. So through anything in life, you got to just keep swimming. So it is leader of the mermaid gang, and I'm advocating it for anybody. Women, men, don't matter. That's lit. Okay. You want to be a part of the mermaid gang? I mean, shit. I, I, I saw the merch. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a certified member at this point. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, so. We initiated you. You heard it here first. So, okay. So, yeah. So, we talked about the Mermaid Gang. And with Dingo, I mean, the lyrics go crazy. Like I said before, we already know how you come in when you hop on the beat. You be talking that shit. Spicy. But, of course, I want to know, how does that translate into, like, your dating life? Like, how do you separate, like, what you talk about in your music versus how you are with your partner? So, for everybody watching, because if anybody confused, I just be rapping about experiences. Like, with the BDE, <laughs> though, it stands for some way bigger than just one of the man dingo. It mm-hmm. really stands for BDE, big man energy. You know, I ain't going to. But if you grown enough, you know exactly what I'm you talking know, about. You know. But it ain't really talking about your size in your pants or in your pockets. It's your mentality. Okay. Hey, like, are you respectful? Like, how you carry yourself? Is you cocky? Are you arrogant? Like, just a respectful grown man. Like, that's BDE to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because if you got all that, the rest of that going to come full circle. Okay. So go get that dingo out on all digital streaming platforms. Yeah. You heard. So, I mean, but just following up on that question, how do you set the expectation for, like, people who you're dating, mm-hmm. you know? Because it's hard. It's tough. And I know, like, I hear a lot of times, like, with women in music, especially ones who yeah. rap, like, about sexually explicit content, yeah. it's always, like, some sort of, like, they're seen as a sex symbol or they're seen, like, a certain type of way. So how do you separate Asian A the rapper from Asian A the lover? So, like, if I deal with a man, he know what vibes I'm coming on. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, okay. I just might rap like that, but he know I ain't spreading myself thin. Mm-hmm. On top of that shit, she, she, he should be happy if he know I could perform like that. <laughs> so, that's that on me. <laughs> it's on that, because I ain't talking about a group of guys, you know? I'm talking about my men. That's what I'm talking about. Mommy and my men. Mommy, mommy and my men. Mommy and my men. Okay, so, um, so, yeah. So, we know that you with BOMG. Yep. Yes. So, what made you sign to... That label as opposed to any other one that's out here. So what's so crazy, just to give a little backstory, um, I met them January 2020, like I said, and we just got a vibe. Like mm-hmm. it was just the whole team. It felt like home. They like helped me grow, helped me like give me an artist development. Not only that, it was just genuine from the start. Like everything just seemed like it met, made sense and I prayed on it. Mm-hmm. And like almost two years later, look where we at. So So you're happy with the decision that you uh, made? Yeah, I'm happy, yeah. Shout out to the label, yeah. Well, that's dope. That's dope. Okay, so tell me, like, what do you have coming next? What can we look out for um, from Asian A? Oh, uh-oh. Ooh, uh-oh, uh-oh. hold on, because you get me excited. Uh-oh, I got the little dance uh-oh. and everything. What's so coming? I say two little sprinkles. So, for one, we're about to drop another visual, OnlyFans. Mm. <laughs> it's a visual. Yeah, all the videos I'm doing nowadays is movies. We ain't doing no more videos. We only do, shooting straight movies. So OnlyFans visual dropping very soon. And then I'm going to drop the Chosen One Deluxe at the top of the year next year. I ain't going to say them all. I'm going to just say we got some bonus tracks. We're going to make Chosen One Deluxe come true. So, yeah. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds good. And as a as a female artist, what words of advice would you give to other upcoming artists who are trying to do their thing and start their career in music? Just keep swimming. Never give up. And no don't mean no. No means keep going. Like Stay consistent. Stay grounded. Grounded and grinding. Yeah, both of them. And keep going. Anybody can do this. If this is really your passion, mm-hmm. you're going to put the work in to get to where you need to go. Okay, okay, okay. So, to wrap up, we almost at the end of December. The year, new year is coming up. Oh, yeah. don't look so down. It, just, it went so quick. You know what I mean? It did. It, it did. It's like January and bam, it's February. Damn. It's, it definitely it, it's, did. It's uh, December. Like. I mean, but you in Atlanta, I mean, at least in New York, we felt that shit. Y'all was outside oh, the whole yeah, pandemic. I didn't think about yeah, that. Yeah, no, we felt that shit, but it's still, it's still what about that? We ain't closed at all. <laughs> I know. I know. I saw. But, so going into the new year, like, what are your expectations? What are your, your goals for 2022? I'm trying to go on tour, man. I'm trying to go on the road. That's what I'm trying to do. That's, That's it. Nice. I'm manifesting that. Like, before May, I'm going to be on tour. 
Period. Like, I want to perform every day. I love performing. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best things about this, performing, because I can really get in my element, mm -hmm. really get in my vibes, and connect with my fans and my supporters. So, Tua, Tua Nate, yes. That's so, all right, and before we wrap up, so you going on, let's say, hypothetically speaking, you're going on a tour. Who's the five people that you would want to perform with you on tour? Five. Five. Oh, my. I'm going to say an upcoming artist. I like Lakia. Mm -hmm. Um... Ah, this is hard. All right, all right, all right. Okay, three. three. I'm gonna give you three. Right, okay, you can do three. I'm gonna give you three. <laughs> um, Ace Apollo, of course, my label mate, crazy. Um, and one more, do a female. Ugh, you put me on the pressure see I am, I am, I am. So like I'm envisioning her. Oh, Tussie. It's a perfect combination. Me, okay. Ace Apollo, and Tussie. And I'm gonna do one and Lakia. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, that's good. That's Manifest, nice. are we grabbing it? Grabbing it. We are. We are. 2022. <laughs> We're going to see Agent 8 on tour. All right, so I know you got to go, so let's shout out your handles, Instagram. What's TikTok. up, gang? It's your girl, Agent 8, Queen Nay, leader of the Mermaid Gang. I'm on all social platforms at the Agent 8, T H E A S I A N A E. Follow me on TikTok. I'm very hilarious on there. Yes. Agent 8 back. Chose one out now, my first project. Go get it and write me. I might write you back. Yeah. It's the might for me. <laughs> no, for real. I'm right back now. I'm just, I'm just bullshitting. They know I'm right back for real. I well, I really appreciate you for coming. Thank, Thank you so you much. Me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your time in New York. Thank you. And that's it for our interview. Bye, y'all.